Hey guys, how you doing? I'm down here in the basement of our home here at Casa de Willis and this right here is Jana's new exercise bike and we've decided to put it down here and uh, what I'm going to do for, for her today and I'm going to show you guys on this video is right here across from the bike on that wall I'm going to hang a TV. Um, so pretty easy project. Um, I've hung a lot of TVs uh, all over the place over the years so I think I'm pretty decent at it but uh, let me show you how I go about hanging a TV. In case you need to hang a TV, it would help you out. Okay, so this is the wall where we're going to put it, right across from the bike. We're going to kind of line it up. Um, in this particular case, there's already an outlet here. And sometimes when you hang a TV, you have to add an outlet. Um, and in fact, almost every one I've done, I've had to add an outlet. Uh, just so you don't have a cord hanging down to go to your outlet. In this particular case though, I think we can just make the bottom of the TV come to about right here and hide that outlet and we'll just use the outlet that's already here. The other thing about this TV is all she's gonna do with it down here in the basement is do streaming and it's a smart TV. So what that means is I don't have to hook anything else up to it. So it'll hook up to the Wi-Fi. We don't have to hook up uh, any kind of other uh, video source to it. So uh, we'll put it here on the wall and uh, like I said, come just below that outlet. Okay, what we're going to put here is a 50 inch TV that we bought and uh, something that I like to do before I go to all the trouble of hanging a TV is visualize it, right? So I measure that TV with my tape measure here and it's uh, 44 inches. So um, one easy way to do it is just to use a little bit of tape like this. So if we wanted to uh, put that TV here and it's 44 inches wide and I want to stay off of this plant here just put my tape measure out to 44 inches and want to be just below this outlet so maybe we'll put it we'll start it about right here so there's one corner of the tv uh, and then this particular tv is uh 25 inches tall so we'll just go up and throw a piece of tape right here So the reason for doing this is because um, to mount the TV, you end up mounting a bracket on the wall and drilling holes, and there's, there's a limit to how much you can move it. Um, uh, TV brackets do allow you to move left or right some once you mount it, but up and down, it's, it's difficult. You can a little bit, but it's harder. So, you know, visualize it first like this. So, you know... Put some tape or something here so you can like, visualize what it's going to be and then take, stand back and look at it and make sure, hey, this is definitely where I want it or, hey, I want to move it up a little bit or something like that. I end up having to move the bike over to the side just a little bit, but I think that's still best because I don't want the uh, the TV up, you know, all of this plant. I could move that stupid plant too, but, but whatever, I'm going to leave it there. Okay, so of course you're going to need one of these. This is the TV mount. This is one I bought on Amazon. Um, this is a certain kind that I uh, particularly like. Let me show you. Uh, let me show you this one. Let's just put this down here. They give you a, all of them. Do this. They give you just tons of hardware. Way more than you're going to need. Tell you the reason why this is the best kind of uh, TV mount is because of this. These TV mounts have these little straps here, and um, some of the early TV mounts to uh, to keep it maintained onto the TV, there was a screw on each side. Uh, if you dealt with one of the earlier ones, there was you'd have to. After you hung the TV, after, you know, this is mounted on the TV, and after you hung this on the wall, you know, you'd hang it, TV be there, you'd need to secure the bottom, so then you'd have to go in with a screw up through the, up through here and tighten it in, and I've still got some TVs hung that way from old mounts. They came up with this spring-loaded thing um, that's so much better. So all you do is you, once you get the TV hung, it, it rotates in, this thing pops and it snaps in place and it's nice and secure. And then if you want to release it, they give you this nice long 
uh, pull cord so that you can pull those two things down. So it's no tools if you want to take the TV on or off. This is a this is a great way to do it. So these two pieces uh, are what you mount on the TV, and this is what you mount to the wall. And like I said, they've got, uh, they give you some screws and uh, you're just going to screw it together. They ship it this way, that way they can put it in a smaller box and save them some money. got the TV stand here and look in reality um, this particular TV we used it for a while sitting on a table that's why it's got the feet on it already those feet will pop in and pop out so uh, I'll just take those feet out when I'm done but this is actually good for making the video because I can set it right here on my workbench upright so the TV has four mounting holes those are the four holes we'll use um, with our brackets here so the way these brackets work is, again, this goes down, the hook's at the top, so they'll mount here. So one thing you're going to want to do, you see how there's a lot of different holes and slots? You want this thing to not hang below the TV, and you want this thing to not stick up above the TV. So that's how you decide where to locate it. Again, to be able to get the benefit out of these things, it's really nice to be able to just reach right underneath the TV from the other side, grab this, and disconnect it. So if you want to take the TV down. Um, let me show you something else that's pretty important. So uh, almost the only thing that's important on these, you know, they give you this quick setup guide here. Um, there's only like one piece of information that's important. And it's right here. So this is where it talks to you about the screw sizes to use. So notice here, it... it it points to it and tells you you need to use an M8 screw. And the C depth, see M8 is the screw size, that's D, it's pointing to the screw. Then the depth here, which is C, it's telling you should be 20 to 22 millimeters. Okay, uh, You don't want to run a real long screw into here and bottom it out. You could damage something because who knows you know, how much clearance they have there. They probably don't have a lot of clearance. If you run a long screw in and tighten down too tight, you might actually hit the back of the screen or the circuit board or something like that. So uh, an M8 by 1.25 screw is the size for this particular TV. And then that depth, 20 to 22 millimeters, um, is posing a little bit of a challenge. Here's why. The TV mount comes with a lot of different options. Unfortunately, none of them are the right length for this particular TV, which happens. So here's what I did have, though. I had some... Uh, M8 screws um, left over from one of the many other uh, TV mounts that I've done. Uh, and I had four of them, but these are actually too long. So if you, so, if I take a washer and put on here, and then I just put it through this thing, um, this sticking out for this particular bolt is is too much, right? It's supposed to be 20 to 22, I think, millimeters. That's a pretty tight range. Um, but then they gave you some of these plastic spacers. So I could put one plastic spacer. And then if I uh, if I check that measurement with uh, my caliper, um, in, in this case I'm getting like a 0 .833, uh, and converted to metric, that's like 21 millimeters. So this is a good solution. Uh, disappointed that the... Um, that I had to find this screw on my own. If not, you have to make a trip to the hardware store, which would be a pain in the butt. Uh, in this case, I had something that would work and I used the spacer from the kit.
Okay, um, you want to tighten these screws snug, but don't really crank them again um, because the TVs actually these TVs aren't really that heavy, surprisingly enough. So we've got our two hooks at the top. We've got our release tabs at the bottom. So we're going to pretend like this is on the wall. So how would this work? Well, it would hook right here, and then this would push in. snap like that okay so the reason why I want to mount it like this is because we have to correlate this position to the edges of the TV right uh, you remember how we have an outlet like it's going to end up right, right here or so well we need to know the dimension from the bottom of the TV to the bottom mounting hole with it with it mounted again we mounted these things based on where we wanted them to land and these things to fit now we got to mount this thing on the wall, and to get the TV in the position that we wanted, um, the dimension we're going to use the dimension from here to here. And that dimension that matters for us here, in this particular case, is going to be 13 and 3 eighths. Just wanted to show you a close up here what this looks like, so you can uh, you can see that plastic spacer right there, and. Um, Here's the bottom screw, and uh, you see that plastic spacer in behind there. They're pretty thin. Um, uh, it really, in my opinion, I think it's not a bad idea for your um, mount to be slightly off of the back of the TV anyway. So using a spacer like that is a good idea. So remember uh, where that mount's going to be. We said that the bottom row of mounting holes, so that the bottom of the TV covers this outlet. We said that was going to be 13 and 3 eighths, so I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to go just slightly below that outlet, and then I'm going to say uh, 13 and 3 eighths. Okay, so next we're going to use our stud finder. Um, everyone's a little different. You'll want to follow instructions for yours. For the most part, they all work the same way. You stick them on the wall somewhere, push the button down and hold it, and then slide it around, and it'll tell you where it finds a stud in behind the wall. One clue as to where studs are is wherever your outlets are because all these outlets, every, everywhere you see an outlet box, it was nailed to a stud in almost every case. So um, there's either a stud right here or a stud right here. Okay, so we got a stud here and there's an outlet down there. Okay, and we got a stud right there. As it turns out, these are uh, 24 inches. So what that means is this particular wall has studs 24 inch on center. Uh, it's probably because it's not a load bearing wall and if you're in the basement, um, it's not really holding anything up. It, it make, can make it a little tricky, here's why. Uh, most studs are, two before studs are spaced at 16 inch on center. And when they're 16 inch on center, then that bracket has the ability to slide around and customize it a little bit, right? Um, in this case, though, that bracket is just barely big enough for 24 inch. That's what it's made for. It's made to barely reach 24 inch apart. So what that means is that bracket is going to have to be centered like right here. Now, uh, recall, we measured up from the bottom of this and put that line. So our, our bottom mount is definitely going to be at that height. Um, so let's work in that area and So this stud finder is pretty much telling us that the center is right there. So another way you can use a stud finder is the moment it detects something. Okay, right there was its first detection. Go past. Yeah. 
you see the moment it detects something and then it's this particular one is pretty good at telling you where the center is it's, it was it was saying that the center is right there all right so we'll just uh put us a mark right there So this uh this X is pretty much where uh where we think the stud is. So the next thing I'm going to show you how to do is how to make sure that that's the center of the stud. The reason why it's important to make sure it's the center is because we're going to be putting a pretty heavy duty large diameter lag screw into it. So you don't want to be off from the center. So our stud finder said the studs between these two lines and it thinks that's the center. So what we're going to use now is a very small um, like a wire brad nail like this. We'll just nail it right in here. That definitely feels like a solid piece of wood. And then we'll move over. That does not. See how that just very easily went in there? That is off of the stud. And that is on the stud right there. So that means put a line right there. We have proven, not just trusting a stud finder, we have proven that that's the edge of the stud. So studs are an inch and a half, so the other edge is probably about right here. That one was probably right on the edge. Move in just a little bit. Right over here. That's actually hitting wood too. And nothing. Okay. Um, what that means is the other edge of the stud is right here. So what I've done here is where these two lines are that go through those holes, um, there is a wood stud behind there because I drove a nail into those. Um, so this goes to show you that the center that the stud finder found is off. So um, when you go to put like a TV and you're going to put a big lag screw into a stud, you really want to be in the center of it. So I'm not going to use that point. I'm going to split the difference and make a center point right in, in between. So our real center needs to be like right here. And that's where we need to, uh, that's where we need to do our mount. So that's my technique for, always being sure that I have the exact center of the stud. So, uh, just to illustrate what I'm talking about, uh, so this is uh, the lag screw that comes with the uh, TV mount. So this is what we gotta drive into the wall to hold the thing in. Uh, and this is a two before, so we're gonna you know, go into this thing like this. So in cross section, you're gonna have something like, like this is what's in the wall, in this orientation, and you've gotta get this thing to go down into it. You're going to drill a hole and then thread this thing down into the hole. So you can imagine if you were over here, um, you could split this. This wood could split. Um, and then it, it, would, it would break. It wouldn't hold any weight. The screw would strip out. Um, so you really want to really wanna get it in the middle. And that's one of the reasons why I just wanted to illustrate this and why it's important to get centered on the studs. I was telling you earlier... Um, if you take a look at the mounting spaces on the holes on this thing, um, if you went all the way to the edge of that slide and all the way to the edge of this one, you're at 24 inches. So this thing is really made to just barely reach across uh, 24 inch center studs. So we've got our one hole where we want it, right? And we found the center of that stud and everything. Let's find the others. And the way to do it is take your uh, bubble level. Um, this one I got that is magnetic. It's kind of handy for this. And we'll uh, we'll put that 
that far right lower corner right there. All right, so that means ideally our other holes are about right there. Um, this one is very likely to hit the center of that stud, but we're still going to check it. These two, let's see, we, we don't know. We'll check these with the stud finder. So the fact that these studs in this wall are on 24 inch centers is going to propose a problem, and here's why. Um, I went and uh, found the center again, popping a little nail in there, used stud finder first, did the same thing down here. Um, and these turn out to be a little more than. Uh, than 24 inches apart. All right, so if you look here, um, if we measure from the center of that one to the center of this one, we're getting about 24 and three quarters. Yep, about 24 and three quarters. The reason why that's a problem is the TV mount is designed that the furthest point out here and the furthest point over there is 24 inches, exactly. So obviously that's a little bit of a problem. We're going to have to fix it. And uh, I think, so if you take a look at this, uh, uh, there's a little bit of uh, space right there uh, beyond where the slot was. So I actually think I could drill some holes in this. Uh, I mean, this is, this is out of the ordinary. In most cases, your mount's going to work. <laughs> this is a little bit of an exception because I'm on this non-load bearing basement wall where they built it with 24-inch centers. And these particular two studs happen to be just from, from um, you know, the accuracy of the construction process, they're a little bit more than 24 inch on center. They're 24 and three quarters right here at this one spot where I need to put it. So I think I can drill this and uh, solve it. So uh, it's a little out of the ordinary, but I think it's still a way to make this work and we'll get it done either way. All right, so uh, since I know that it's 24 and three quarters, um, what I like to do when I'm measuring out something like this is, um, go out to like a, an even increment like 20 because if you work with the end of your tape measure it's a little less a little less precise so you could start at 10 but 10 is showing uh 30 seconds and on this tape measure 20 is just showing 16 16 the way it look the same on both sides and then you can just look over here on this side and since we're off by 20 we'll be measuring to 44 and three quarters here on this side uh, anyway all I do is just kind of center it, right? So in this particular case, all I did is made that amount of space equal to this amount of space and the distance between them be uh, 24 and 3 quarters. So that's one uh, easy way to do it if you just need to center something like that. It ended up being about a quarter of an inch from the edge of that. So then I just put some little pencil marks like that right there. Uh, and that's what I'm going to use to uh, to drill. Just put some wood blocks under here. Um, this one is the one I'll actually drill into. Um, or actually, I could just move it like that and I'll be drilling uh, just past the edge of it. Uh, this one is just, just to hold it up at the right level. Uh, and then these, uh, these clamps like this are pretty handy for this sort of thing. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to use a step drill. Uh, you probably, I think I've referred to this in other videos. Uh, step drills are great if you're drilling through sheet metal, and this is sheet metal, so we're going to use this. nice clearance hole for that bolt so you'll um, you'll notice this side came out pretty smooth and uh, this side's a little rough looking uh, where I drilled it so something you can go do with a step drill that's that's pretty cool is you can use it to like deburr and chamfer so that helped uh, that helped get rid of uh, Let's help clean up this side a little bit. 
All right, now we have our uh, holes uh, in the corners of this thing where we modified it to add some holes at um, 24 and 3 quarter. And all we'll do, uh, our bubble level back in place there. All we'll do now is hold it up here. We have our markings um, on the wall where we, uh, where we know the studs are. And now it's just a matter of line all that up, mark through the hole that we drilled, the holes that we drilled. This is one of the reasons why having your holes you know, like perfectly aligned is not perfect because you're going to mark straight through this thing anyway. Okay, a couple things worth talking about. Uh, these are the lag screws that were provided in the kit uh, with the mounting bracket and the instructions of that kit said, kit said to use a 732nd drill bit which is this drill bit. Um, so you don't have instructions. The key thing you want to keep in mind is uh, you don't want to drill the hole too small. It's a wood screw but you still want a hole that's big enough that just the teeth will bite and the center shank of the, the screw will just fit. So for example You'll notice here, if you lay the drill bit in front of the screw, you see how the uh, it is like pretty much the same size as that center uh, body of the screw. Another thing to keep in mind is uh, this is the 2 before. This is just like what's in the wall. This is what you're going to be going into. So you see it's going past halfway. So you don't want to drill too deep, actually. You want to drill the depth of the screw. You don't go uh, much further than that. So, so one way to do that is to take a little piece of tape, um, put your screw like this up against the drill bit, um, and you do want to go just a little bit past it. But you don't want to go really far. So you might put your tape like right there. So you see what I mean? Um, I'm going to go a little past it, but not much. See, I'm like saying go about an eighth of an inch past it. So put this little bit of tape on your drill bit. And then when you drill, you know, stop when you get to that depth. Running it in and out a little bit like that's good for cleaning out the, the wood chips that are stuck in there. The reason why I always do this with a ratchet and do it manually instead of driving it in with a, uh, with a gun, uh, with a power tool, is because you want to be paying attention to make sure that you don't hear you know, wood starting to crack and pop because that would be a problem. Okay, before you tighten the bolts down, finally, you just want to make sure this bubble level is still showing it level, uh, which this is pretty good, so we're all set. And don't go crazy tightening them super tight, because if you strip out some of the wood, uh, you're in trouble. Now, when you do this, it's best to use two people, and then you want these two brackets on either side of this middle thing, and there's hooks right in here that you just hook in. All right, so it's hooked at the top, and then as you push down on the bottom, it should snap like that. That's what I was telling you about those snaps that snap in the bottom.
So one of the things I wanted to show you on uh, the bottom of this TV is uh, these little straps. Remember I told you about these these straps. See if you if you hang those the right way, they're just barely up under there. Uh, they don't really show. See, there's our there's the bottom of our outlet. They don't really show. Um, but if you need to release the TV, it's just very easy to reach up there and grab that, and then release the TV down at the bottom. So, okay, mission accomplished. The TV's hung up. It looks great. Um, honestly, of all the TVs I've ever hung on the wall uh, using this method, I've never run into 24-inch spacing on the studs. And then, in this case, we also ran into the stud spacing was a little more than 24 inches, and we had to modify the bracket. Uh, it, in most cases, you won't run into that. I can tell you, like I said, I've done 10 or 15 TV hangs. This is the first time it's happened. Um, if you have 16-inch centers, you know, it's a lot closer together, and then you actually have a little more freedom on moving your bracket left to right. Uh, in this case, we couldn't because the bracket barely reached between the two. Um, but anyway, hey, I hope this video helps you if you're hanging a TV, uh, learn a little bit about it. Hey, so thanks for watching my video, and I'll see you on the next one.